Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Nicholas Rosamatos. Uh, I work with AWS as a Partner Solutions Architect. Uh, and with me, I have Jim Garrett. Yep. Hey, I'm Jim Garrett. I am the AWS Alliance's Chief Architect at Red Hat, supporting AWS and everything they have going on. So we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, OpenShift ACM, or Advanced Cluster Manager, um, and all the def benefits and features that actually it can bring uh, to managing, you know, not just OpenShift, but also other Kubernetes platforms. So, Jim, do you want to give kind of a, a high-level overview of what ACM is and the value that it brings? Sure. So ACM stands for Advanced Cluster Manager, and as its name implies, it's used to manage various clusters that we have, specifically Kubernetes clusters. So, for example, as you can see, on the picture in front of me, uh, ACM can be used to manage OpenShift, which is uh, the container platform that Red Hat provides. We also have the ability to manage uh, AWS version of OpenShift, which is called ROSA, stands for Red Hat OpenShift Service on AWS. And we can also manage other Kubernetes um, uh, clusters, such as AWS's EKS product. So with ACM, you have the ability to, to manage all of those pieces of the puzzle, uh, you can actually import in other Kubernetes clusters as well. So, for example, if you've got your own Kubernetes cluster, you want to be able to import it in and, and visually see how it's comprised and what it's doing, you can do that as well. So you're basically saying ACM can manage both OpenShift on-prem, it can manage OpenShift running in AWS, it can manage EKS, and it can manage ROSA? That's exactly right. So what are some of the limitations when you're managing, you know, maybe third-party uh, vanilla Kubernetes services, like maybe like an EKS or a standalone Kubernetes cluster? So the main limitation with that is all you can do is import it and visualize it. You can't actually export it out or push something out and create an additional cluster with ACM. Uh, it's simply for, for read-only purposes. Okay. And what are some of the features of what ACM can actually do when it comes to management of the clusters themselves? Yeah. So when you think about cluster management, think about some of the use cases that are important. For example, if you're doing stuff on the edge, maybe you want to have the ability to deploy a cluster out to your edge. And you want to make sure that those clusters are identical on every edge device that you deploy them out to. So, so that's a major, major feature of ACM. Uh, but another feature with ACM is when you think about governance. For example, um, you want to make sure that all of your, your environments are identical. And that starts at the development level, progresses into tests, and into production. And it could also include disaster recovery. So with ACM, you have the ability to push out those clusters, to make sure that they're identical every time you push a new one out. And with that, you're going to, you're going to enable your, your operations people to have to work less hard. So they can literally just leverage this product and start to push out the environments as you've designed them. So those, those are two important use cases. And when you think about those use cases, then you start to think about applications that are deployed in those clusters. Uh, oftentimes those applications, you know, you want to make sure that they're deployed um, specifically in a certain way. So maybe you would create some type of automated playbook or script to push them out. So once you create the cluster, you can then start to push your applications out. You can get uh, true uh, cluster and high availability with, with the tool, uh, all just by first pushing that cluster out with ACM. So really what I'm hearing is it's, there's a lot of benefits there, not just for the operations team, but for the, the DevOps teams as well to maintain configuration and drift and things along those lines. Huge, huge features. I, I, I mean, Nick, I can't tell you how many times in my career people ask me the question, how long is it going to take to create a test environment or a production or even a disaster recovery? Right. Um, if you can actually set that up up front with something like ACM, then you can reduce that time to push those environments out exponentially. I mean, it can go from days or weeks to, to push something out to minutes or hours to wow. push something out. Yeah, that's, that's extremely powerful. Um, so as far as the, the deployment mechanism for getting ACM up and running, um, is that pretty simple or is it super complicated? Um, can you walk through yeah. a little bit of that? No, it's actually super simple. There, there's actually two deployment mechanisms. Uh, one is Red Hat has a website called their Hybrid Cloud Console. Uh, it's accessed using cloud.redhat.com. And with that Cloud Console, there's a, there's a feature to actually push out these clusters using ACM. So ACM is part of that particular website. So that's one way. And when, and when you go to that website, you'll obviously choose the type of cluster. For example, uh, is this going to be on AWS or is this going to be on-prem? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, you can select whatever the authentication parameters are. For example, if you're using a secure token server, something right. like that. 
Uh, you can specify all of those parameters inside of ACM, uh, inside of this hybrid cloud console, and then you can say, let's push a cluster out to that environment. So that's one way. Uh, a second way is if you already have OpenShift up and running and installed, there is an operator that can be installed inside of OpenShift, which is the ACM operator. That operator provides the ability to do all those things I just described. Right. So you, you again, you create that secure token service, that connection uh, into uh, AWS or into your on-premise environment, and, and with that version of OpenShift, you can now push out these clusters. Wow, yeah, so it sounds like it's really easy to get up and running start linking all of your different uh, Kubernetes you know, clusters and OpenShift clusters directly back to it and start managing everything through a single pane of glass. Super simple, and when you go to, pr to, to push that particular cluster out, it'll take like 30 minutes, 40 minutes or so to push it out. Wow. So in that amount of time, you can have a second or a third or a fourth OpenShift cluster up and running. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, well, thanks for joining our session today, um, and looking forward to uh, talking a little bit more about uh, ACM and ACS in the future. All right, thanks, Nick. Thanks.